guys, it's Lori. So this is part three, and I guess I probably should have started from the beginning and told you about how it was like when I was a little kid and all that kind of stuff. So I guess I'll say that like real quick, and I'll, I'll do a video about that if anyone's interested, but there's been so many supernatural, odd, bizarre experiences in my life, and you know, I'm driving down the road and I think of one. I'm going through something right now that it, it, something happened to me, um, let's see, how old is Josh? Uh, I think Josh is going to be 32, and it really hit the fan on his 21st birthday, so 10, 11 years ago, 11 or 12 years ago, it, it happened, and it was devastating, and I know that its roots were the enemy, I know that. Um, the enemy has been on my tail all my life since birth or even pro possibly prior to being born. Um, as I've told you before, I was born, you know, as a seer, one foot in this realm, one foot in the next. And, you know, I think any of us, if you're a true believer, if you ask the Lord for, to see with spiritual eyes, you may be shocked at what you see. And I, I was born that way, and I tried for years to shut it off. I tried to pretend it didn't exist. Um, I tried going the, when I was real young, the religious r route, and that, because that's all I knew. Um, and that didn't work out. And it's, it's been a journey, as I'm sure it has for all of you. And as a child, I was very frightened a lot of the times by um, spiritual events, spiritual happenings. I heard voices. I saw um, shadow people. I saw demons. I saw angels. I knew things about people and what was going to happen. Um, I could see the spiritual side of people. Now, I'm talking a very young child. My very first, like, real vivid memory of this when I asked my mom how old I was she said I was three um because it was a Christmas it was like this big deal and she said I was three and that's my first clear vivid memory but I remember at the time it wasn't anything new so it had been going on prior to that but I can't tell you exactly when it started because I was so young I know some people remember like being in their crib I don't I have blocks in time in my childhood that I don't remember. I don't think that has anything to do with spiritual stuff. I think that's probably, you know, the childhood that I had. So, I mean, I could go on and on and on about stories like that, and I will. I'll add these, add some of them in there. I think I already told you about the bicycle thing when I jumped outside of my body with that. I've jumped out outside of my body several times in my life, and as I'm sure many of you have, during tragic moments, when I was raped, I jumped outside of my body. I think when children are abused, they jump outside of their body. It causes um, what they used to call multiple personality. Um, it causes all kinds of disorders for people. But I, I had, so I had stuff like that going on. And then I also had um, this supernatural, spiritual side. And I believe all children can probably see spirit. But not all children stay that way. Um, I don't know why I did, because I certainly didn't have encouraging parents. And I, in this day and age of deception, it's really hard because a lot of parents encourage it, but encourage it in the wrong way. They encourage, not, not on purpose, but they encourage their child towards the negative um, unknowingly, which I fell into for a very long period of my life. I was deceived by the New Age movement and everything, and I, I am very sorry about that, but I, you know, I can't go backwards. Thank God my kids know the Lord. Um, I still pray for them every day uh, because, you know, it, that's a private matter between God and them, and nobody can really say um, who knows the Lord, but he says, you'll know them by their fruits. So as you know, the Lord changes you from within. And I can honestly say that he has sent me the Holy Spirit and changed me, but I still have this, I don't know, um, uh, ability, gift, whatever it is. So anyhow, um, 
it's as if, like I said, it's as if I've been tormented spiritually all my life. It's been a constant battle. And I know that other people have their battles too. I'm not saying like I'm the only one or I'm chosen or special or anything like that. But it's so clearly supernatural. People that get close, you know, you hear me talking, you probably go, yeah, whatever. But people that have been close in my life are amazed by it because it's all bizarre, out of this world kind of stuff. So I have lots and lots and lots of stories. But if you could just keep me in prayer because that thing that happened 12 years ago, whatever it was, that totally devastated me, threatened to break up my family, which it did not succeed. My family is extremely close. I love my children. I know you love your children. Or if you have them, I know families are close. I am blessed to have an extremely close family. Not without its problems. Lord have mercy on us. We all have our issues. And you know, every parent looks back and goes, geez, if only I could have, you know, and don't do that to yourself because there's nothing you can do but go forward. But that same spirit, that same, yeah, it's a spirit, that same demonic dark energy is at it again, almost exactly the same way, coming through the same person or persons as before. I thought it was all over. I thought it couldn't happen again, but it is. They're not going to win this time either. But it's still heart-wrenching at the same time. Okay, so I've wasted all that time talking about that. And someday I will explain that completely. If you want to know now, definitely give me a call. It's no secret. I'm not hiding anything. Whatever. But what I wanted to talk about today, I'll put this as part three, is my son. He, um, my oldest son. So he was an atheist for a very, very long time. Um, he used to, actually we used to get into these, um, I don't discussions heated discussions and then um he is no longer an atheist he he is a, a strong devout believer now but um he had some questions you know as most teenagers do he struggled with spirituality he struggled with truth he wanted to know the truth he wanted to know why people suffer in the world you know the the questions we all have and we had a really rough road to hoe and he was the oldest so he got the brunt of it so he had a lot of anger inside a lot of confusion, uh, you know, and anyway, one day, and I'm not sure, I don't think he had quite come to the Lord yet, but he was like in his, his questioning stage, and forgive me for not really remembering that, it's been so many years now, I think he's going to be 32 in November, I believe, um, and he was probably when this happened, I'm guessing he was maybe Anywhere between 15 and 17, I think. And I'm not going to get it 100% correct. Maybe someday I could interview him and he could tell you, like, exactly what happened. But I'm just going to tell you my version of what he told me. So he had a dream one night. And he woke up and he was white and he was shaking. And he was like, Mom, it wasn't a, he, I got to tell you what happened last night. It wasn't a dream. It was a visit. So a man... He said a very good-looking man dressed very nice um, in a, not a three-piece suit, but dressed in a, you know, like a suit, a uh, button-down shirt. Um, I, I don't know if he had a jacket on or not, but he said dressed, you know, really nice, like GQ. Um, a handsome man, evident, evidently wealthy um, and very nice, came to him. And they sat at a table together. This man asked him to sit down at a table with him. And they were sitting down at the table. Now, at the time, my son would drink a little bit. And he knew that he liked it a little too much. He knew that he could have a problem with that. And it was something that he was struggling with at the time. I mean, he wasn't, like, drinking all the time. He wasn't even old enough to drink. This happened prior to him coming of age to drink, though. Because, um... I know that by, you know, things that happen in our life. But he did, he realized that he potentially could become a full-blown alcoholic. So, anyhow, um, they sat at this table and the man was offering him a good life. He was offering him, you know, stability in this world, 
um, financial security, all the things that this world had to offer. And he kept telling him to take a drink. Now, Josh, he said, at first the guy seemed nice, but then as the discussion went on, there was like a, a sense of evil about him. And I don't remember all the words. Like I said, maybe someday I'll interview Josh and Josh can tell you because I'm sure he remembers ex exactly. So then this man kept telling him to drink and go ahead, drink. And he's like, no, I don't want to. And every time he would say he didn't want to, this man would say something was going to happen. Um, your brothers are going to be ripped apart from your family. Um, you want a drink? You're going to be homeless. You want a drink? Um, basically, if you don't do what I say, this is going to happen. Your brother's going to be ripped from the family. You're going to be homeless. Um, there's other, it was all, it was like five or six different things. Um, all really horrifying stuff. And the last was, your mother's going to die young. Now, do you want a drink? And Josh said at that point he was so terrified. I, I don't know if he walked out or if he woke up. And the man was laughing. Now the really bizarre, you could say, okay, it was just a dream, right? But the really bizarre part of this is Josh told me all this. I remember we sat down and he was like, Mom, it wasn't a dream. It was real. He was terrified that this stuff was going to happen. And each and everything that he said it was like, no, no, that's not going to happen. Like, you know, everything's fine. Your brothers are fine. We're okay financially, you know. Um, I had some health problems, but I was getting better. It was like, no, I'm not going to die. You know, like, this is... And I believed him that it was more than a dream. He, he believed he encountered the devil himself. And I believe he did. And, um... So I got him to calm down and, you know, it was like, okay, you know, more, all the more reason not to drink, right? And, and he was really, that shook him up for a long time. Well, lo and behold, I don't know if it was, because like I said, it's so many years ago. I don't know if it was a year later, six months later, whatever. Each and everything. And my son can list them for you. I don't remember everything. But I'd say for the next four or five years of our lives, after, maybe a year later, six months later, something like that, every single thing that the devil said happened. Every single thing. My children were ripped away unrightfully, so we did end up homeless. Um, there were lies, deceit. The devil was basically saying that he was going to make it so that the world would believe the lies and this would happen and this would happen and this would happen. But Josh could just give in and everything would be fine. Everything on that list happened down to, I mean, he described it perfectly. It happened. And like I said, it wasn't coming. It's not like Josh saw this coming and it, cause it didn't even make any sense at the time that he had the dream, but every last thing happened except for obviously my death, okay? But Josh still hasn't given in. In fact, he's closer to God now. Like I said, some things relating back to that are beginning all over again. So I know the fight's still on. And I, I wish I could explain in detail, but I would be in this video for two hours if I told you in detail. But little by little, I'm going to be telling you because I'm going to be telling you these supernatural experiences. And some of them are funny. Some of them are just bizarre. And some of them are horrible. So I would like you guys to pray for me if you could um, because it is starting all over again. Josh is also having some experiences. Now, Josh doesn't... We don't. I haven't even seen Josh in two years um, because he lives in Ohio now. I hope to see him soon. But the last time I saw him, I think it was like two years ago. And I miss him, I miss him like crazy, but we'll see each other soon. But when we pray together, we have to pray, you know, over the phone or whatever. So if you could pray for him too, and my other children who are going through their stuff too, Nick and Bobby are their names, and 
their children. We need to stand together. If you could lift us in prayer, I, we can't let this happen again. We can't let it go. As, we won last time. We won that battle. Boy, did we fight it hard. Or those battles, I should say. But it took four hard years. Even longer. And now it starts again. And it starts again, like I said, almost exactly the same. Through the same people. Oh, it's just amazing how, you know, the enemy can use people over and over and over again and they don't even realize it. I don't think I'm as weak as I was then. I don't think I'm as vulnerable. I mean, my heart crushed, but I think I'm stronger. I know I'm stronger in the Lord, but if you guys could lift me in prayer. But isn't that bizarre, that, that uh, visit from the, I call it the visit from the devil, and one day I will have Josh on to tell you exactly what happened because it was much more interesting than I just told it. Um, yeah. Yeah. Anyway, keep on fighting. If you Don't think the devil's not real. Don't think the dark energy's not real. It is. And there's only one way to fight him. And that's through God. And, you know, people have these ideas. You, yeah, you can burn sage. You can burn candles. You can do all of that. And that's wonderful. But it's what's behind it. You know, I mean, if you don't have any faith, if you don't have any belief system, they're going to walk all over you. They'll pretend, they'll even pretend that, you know, they're gone or whatever, but they're not going to be gone, okay? We're all in a battle. We're all in a battle together. It's just some have more supernatural experiences than others. But anyway, yeah, so that's that one. And I'm sorry this video is so long. I tend to talk a lot. I am so sorry. But I'm sorry for that, but I feel like, you know, when I'm doing these videos, I feel like I'm just chatting with you guys. I really wish we could get on, like I told you before, I want to start a group where we can talk to each other. I have, I pay for a room that I can do classes, that I can do groups and that sort of stuff. So join me, then we can talk to each other. It won't be just me rambling on. All right, I'll talk to you guys soon. I hope you have a great day, and I'm going to be doing some videos on relationships too, but I just wanted to kind of keep doing this series on the supernatural because you know what? The energy is getting really dark in this world, and we have to start joining together. Okay, I'll talk to you soon.